What's going on everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. And I'll tell you what, between the Tuscaloosa Terminators and the Savannah Spirits, we have the two most popular teams in the SFL going head to head today. 14 total subscribers between these two teams. Spirits are undefeated at 4-0. And we are kind of on a skid at one and three season starting to slip away. So we're looking to turn our season around today against a division rival. And we are going down to the Haunted Mansion. No, you guys love that in Savannah, Georgia to take on our division foes. We also got seven new subscribers joining the league today. We got to see why these spirits are undefeated and why they're so good. We got a lot to get into today. Cue the intro, man. First and foremost, we did add a new subscriber to this already subscriber pass defense here on your Tuscaloosa Terminators, and that would be new strong safety in the mix, Brandon Moore. Shout out Brando Lando 21 in the comments below. Brandon here is going to be, as I said, joining an already subscriber pack defense. He is 6'4", 215 out of Illinois, and I am not messing around with this secondary man. We need to get some interceptions, so I went ahead and gave my man 98 zone coverage. Surely that will help us in our cause to not allow teams to put up 40 bombs on us. He's got 93 speed too, which is good. 91 acceleration is pretty good as well. And he's got 76 tackling and 76 hit power. So surely adding Brandon here to the mix can only help our cause. And then some of our defensive ends, you know, they went ahead and just hit the weight room here. Aiden Leslie, two, six, four, he huh? grew somehow, <laughs> randomly, and now he weighs 239 pounds. You know, I was doing some thinking, and our defensive line was definitely undersized, so I just am trying anything I can possibly think of here to get uh, our defense fired up. Austin Kringle, he also grew as well, and he hit the weight room. He is now at 6'3", 232. So I am hoping for the first time this season that our defense actually shows up today. We got a new subscriber tight end joining Lamar Jackson and fellow subscriber Aiden Grau, who is a cornerback, and that would be Mr. Jesse Moore. Shout out at Jesse Moore, 5343 in the comments. Lamar Jackson not going to need Mark Andrews to throw the ball to because he's got a good one here. Jesse is 6'3", 255 out of Illinois, and he is a good, good pass catching tight end. Got the 90 catching, the 91 acceleration. He's pretty fast too, 89 speed, and uh, he can catch the ball in traffic as well. So the Jersey Shore D's here getting a little bit better. They're already a good squad, and I believe they are undefeated. And having Jesse here should only help to elevate their already good roster. New QB here on the Akron Summits, formerly the Cleveland Browns, and my main franchise team on my other series on the channel, Akron Summits Franchise. Go check that one out if you like full franchise content. Uh, we're actually pretty good. Three and one, I believe, is our record there. And also, I should mention, if this is your first time in the SFL, most of you guys know what's going on here. If you would like to join the league as a creative player, check the pinned comment down below. I didn't even count how many subscribers we have in the league before this episode, but I think that we're in the 30s now. So if you'd like to be a part of it, uh, it's a great, great time and would love to have you on board. But Possibly the best name here in the SFL. We got Mr. Dragon Zetron. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Please let me know if I am not. But uh, he has the Jaden Daniels type of build, 6'3", 195 out of Ohio State. Of course, he can uh, definitely run the ball pretty well with 92 speed. And of course, the 95 agility, just like Jaden also gave him number five as well. But uh, no slouch as a passer either. 93 throw power pretty accurate across the board especially in that short range and he can also throw on the run as well so welcome to the sfl drag dragon and welcome to the akron summits and we got a new subscriber teaming up with chase kaiser here on the rochester rebels who just beat us several episodes ago and beat us pretty convincingly but we have mr tommy pickle so maybe tied uh with dragon for the best name in the sfl i don't know it's a toss-up here but tommy gave him the jay jettas build 5'7, 210 out of lsu not as tall as jay jettas but 
You know, kind of looks like him, got the same number, and also a very good receiver, 93 speed, but 95 catching. So just like Justin Jefferson, he can definitely catch passes thrown his way. Also with the 92 spectacular catch and the 92 jumping, Tommy Pickles here is look. Tommy Pickle, I'm sorry, my Rugrats creeping into my brain. Tommy Pickle here is looking to take the league by storm. And we'll get a quick look at this subscriber packed Savannah Spirits team. Some old subscribers on here and some brand new in this episode. So it all runs through the field general here himself, Caleb Hayes. And look at those uniforms, man. I got a sneak peek. Wait till you see the alternates. I don't know what I'm going to rock with today, but the Spirits uniforms are fire. But Caleb here, 6'1", 199 out of Temple. He can throw the ball on the run very, very well. Pretty good throw power, too, at 90. And also pretty accurate across the board. Very fast, 94 speed. So we're going to have to do our best to keep Caleb contained and in the pocket today. And if we are successfully able to do that, guess what? He has a subscriber running back who is also very, very good lining up right beside him or behind him. That is Daniel Banks. So 5'10 out of Rutgers here. Daniel, yes, Derrick Henry build. I remember adding this gentleman to the SFL 95 break tackle. Or maybe he was the, he might be the, he's the Isaiah Pacheco build. I'm sorry. Isaiah Pacheco build here. 95 break tackle, 94 speed. And really, I mean, he looks like he's going to be a force to be reckoned with in the backfield. So we got to deal with Caleb Hayes at QB. We got to deal with Daniel Banks at running back. And guess what? We got two subscriber wide receivers brothers, might I add. George Smith here being the wide receiver number one. He's six foot one, 199, also out of Temple as well. 95 speed. Look, I'm starting to see why the Spirits team is undefeated. They got some stacked stacked positions here and they're going to be a handful but 95 speed 93 catching can run the ball can run routes with the best of them you know or up there in an elite level and he's also very agile with the 95 agility and if we can somehow contain george smith caleb hayes and daniel banks oh that's right another subscriber brother here deandre smith pretty much just as good 510 180 out of georgia 99 speed oh hey why, why do I do this to myself? I made these players, so I pretty much uh, should have seen it coming. Spirits in our division, so of course, we do play them twice per year. But wow, man, he is a deep route guy. 95 deep route, 99 speed. Uh, good thing we have, you know, new set, new uh, strong safety on our team. Subscriber cornerbacks, they're going to have their freaking hands full because the Spirits have some weapons. Dallas Bolton is a new subscriber here joining the Spirits. He's 6'5", 258 out of North Dakota. I mean, he's no slouch in his own right either. 89 speed, 85 catching, can catch the ball in traffic, can run routes pretty well for a tight end. So just more weapons. Uh, check out their offensive line here. See if we can maybe get some pressure. For once in this series, Garrett Bowles is a really good left tackle, captain on the team. Chuma Edoga, eh, I mean, not that great of a left guard. Graham Barton, he's a rookie, you know, out of Duke, so pretty good. 75 overall for a rookie, I feel like is pretty good. Dominic Punai, 71, not really good right guard. Brian O'Neill, good right tackle, so, you know, not really too much on the, too many holes on the offense. Let's check out their defense, though. Brandon Fisk. 75 rated overall left end Dorrance Armstrong. So, you know, D line. Okay. Maybe the D line is their, you know, weakness or soft spot, so to speak. Maybe we'll have uh, some time for our subscriber quarterback to throw the ball. Kyle Van Noy is the left outside linebacker. Good veteran Cole Holcomb and uh, Josie Jewell. Pretty good middle linebackers, I would say. Harold Landry, decent right outside linebacker. And here we go now with uh, the other subscribers joining the Spirits. Marshawn Lattimore is their CB number one. But Trustin Smith, also brother of George and DeAndre, six foot 189 out of Florida, 94 speed, not a lockdown corner by any stretch of the imagination, but good in coverage and very, very fast can jump. So trying not to throw any picks here with, uh, with Drew Thompson, our quarterback, subscriber quarterback. And then the mentor of the Smith brothers, also new subscriber here, Jackson Prime, is the other cornerback, 6'3", 185, also out of Florida. He's a little bit better in man coverage, also very fast as well. Maybe not as good in uh, in zone, but yeah, man, this is going to be, I don't know, Jesse Bates too? God, man, yeah, no, Kyle Duggar, no wonder why 
Spirits are 4 0. This one could be tough. Thursday night prime time and gotta get a look at these uh, Savannah Spirits uniforms here. So they're home. I might just rock with that. There's a look at their way, but check this out, man. The Halloween Knights. I like that a lot. Part of me wants to wants to use that, but I just, you know, I don't want to always use the alternate jerseys, but those are the Halloween Knights. Very, very slick. We'll just go ahead and stick to the default homes because I do like those a lot. But if you guys are fired up, man, please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel. Almost at 1,000 subscribers. I'm at 997 at the time of recording this. So by the time this video goes public, I may even be at 1,000. And once I get there, NFL jersey giveaway for you guys. Cannot wait. So without further ado, let's get on down to the Haunted Mansion in Savannah, Georgia, and get ready for the game. Savannah and Tuscaloosa, not that far away. So, uh, you know, shades of Alabama Crimson Tide going up against the Georgia Bulldogs. And we are here in the Haunted Mansion, and these spirits are going to be looking to make ghosts out of us today. And we really, really have to avoid that. Why doesn't it say, whatever, I don't know, EA's weird. I was going to say, why doesn't it say Savannah, Georgia, Haunted Mansion? But, you know, who really cares? We know, we know what the deal is. But this is a must-win game for us, guys. Season kind of hanging in the balance here. I mean, not necessarily. You know, one in four... If we lose this, uh, teams do recover from that, and the NFC is not even really that good here in the SFL, but still, just got to get it done, man. So uh, Patrick Peterson looking like he may have pretty good kick return. Not too bad, and we'll start this thing from the 39. Drew Thompson, I reset him, man. I did not. He was. I recreated Bo Nix into him, and Bo Nix already had a ton of interceptions, so I just didn't feel right about that. Like, I want Drew to have a clean slate. And, you know, that's that's why I did that. So he is back to square one and hopefully he can have a clean game under center today. Lord knows we're going to need it. And this guy right here, Christian McCaffrey, going to need him to have some good runs and not really going to do that as Dorrance Armstrong is there to bring us down for no game. It's all about time of possession here. Need long sustained drives. So let's just do something, uh, you know, safe here. Mesh spot. I mean, that was a dangerous pass there. There's Jackson Prime. Newly added subscriber cornerback. I don't know what the heck I was. I was seeing ghosts here in the Haunted Mansion because nobody was really open on that play. Um, D-Hop, though. D-Hop, let's custom stem his curl. Want to make sure he gets past the first down yard marker because uh, we may just be looking his way, as a matter of fact. Perfect. There we go. DeAndre Hopkins sits down on that route. Drive does continue. Thank God. I did not want to have to punt it uh, back to the spirits here on a three and out. Talking about time of possession, that would have been <laughs> that would have been the opposite of good time of possession. And you know, one way to have good time of possession, have a good running attack, right? Christian McCaffrey, one of the best in the business. You know, he's had I think one great game for us, but the rest have been just kind of uh, subpar. So he's overdue for a big one. So far, not really working out too well for him. But we're going to continue to go his way. Here on second and eight, try a little uh, play action. Oh. oh, nobody's open. And Thompson going to get sacked there by Fisk in a third and 19. This game not starting out too great. No, it's a little early, but I am going to go TE attack here. I mean, third and 19, like, what do you really do? Thompson going to roll out of the pocket. Let's see if he can run and pick this up. Does Thompson have some moves? No, not really. Okay, 13 yards. He gave it a valiant effort. And we are in Spirits territory. Wow. 58-yard field goal. Oh, man. I'm going to miss this. Hundred. I mean, not 100%, but... I'm just not good at kicks, and look how fast that kicking meter is going. I don't know about this, guys. Let's see. Don't think we have the leg, but maybe. Ah, uh, just needed a sliver, sliver more power there from subscriber Corey Booter. But that was a good effort, as a matter of fact, and... Yeah, kicking is not my specialty, but I mean, if that thing was about two yards, you know, closer, Booter would have nailed it. And unfortunately, we do give uh, Caleb Hayes and these spirits pretty good field position. Now, Hayes is going to come out single back here with Daniel Banks. 
to his left. It's going to be a run to Banks and uh, Savannah, or no, not the Spirits. <laughs> the Terminators are there to converge on Banks, who had 14 rushes for 65 yards last week and a score. I guess pass here on second and six. I feel like it will probably be a passing situation and maybe our D tackle Silas Vaden can possibly get back to him. Yeah, I mean, you know, not the best effort in the world there, but Amari Taylor, our subscriber cornerback, is there to stop DeAndre Smith. So a little subscriber on subscriber action. A little blitz action here. Caleb Hayes is coming out. Empty backfield out of the shotgun. Can somebody please get back to him? Yes. We're there to get him. It is Jax Vaden, the linebacker, who had... I feel like a sack in the last episode, too. So we got uh, Silas Vaden on our D-line. We got Jax Vaden as a linebacker. And that is a good sign to see there as we are able to get some pressure early. And now on this third and 15, just please got to get him off of the field here. Oh, Jaden Taylor with a great defensive play. Would have loved the interception, but I am totally fine with the pass deflection. Nice play there by Jaden Taylor, number seven. And we'll see if uh, Cameron Dicker is able to boot a long field goal through here. James Bradbury, I'm not even going to attempt to block this because that usually ends in disaster. And Cameron Dicker able to do what we were not able to. But still, a good drive. Our defense looked pretty solid. And now we just got to bounce back and have a good offensive drive. First and 10 here. Ball is at the 37. Um, kind of want to run away from the blockers here. In this situation, got to ID up the mic and Christian looking to uh, to get some good, good yardage with him. And there's a pretty good one. I will certainly take that. There we go. McCaffrey almost able to get to the second level. He's now at four for 20, though, averaging five yards per carry. First and 10 here. I do see Romeo Dobbs getting pressed. Maybe we look his way. Uh, pfft, No, it's all. Oh, come on, man. True. Oh, boy. All right. Now, I admit I hung back in that pocket way too long, but, like, where is the protection, man? I swear if it ain't one thing, it's another. Like, our defense is finally playing good. Now we can't. I don't know, man. That was close. He, he might have had a knee down. We'll see if it gets reviewed. Nope. Not even going to get reviewed. It's a clean fumble. That is very, very unfortunate. And so far, our offense really... Can't do anything, it doesn't appear. A nice little check down there to Elijah Moore. And the Spirits got this already to the 32. All right, come on, boys. More pressure here. Hayes has Daniel Banks back there to his left. Need to get somebody back there. We had a chance, but Caleb Hayes did what I should have and made a, you know, he made a quick decision. Didn't sit back, back there in that pocket like I did. But in fairness, you know, on that last play, I just, maybe I, maybe I missed something, but I really don't think I saw anybody getting open. In any case, though, first quarter is winding down. Oh, could I get an interception, man? That would have been a house call from Amari Taylor. So both the Taylor brothers, man, Jaden had, had a chance on one. Amari had a chance on one. And uh, that is what we need in order to win some ball games is some big, big game-changing plays like that. That one would have been huge, by the way. And, I mean, if, if uh, I think that was Xavier Howard. If he would have put his hands up, maybe he could have had a pick. You know, I came out pressure, but I'm going to audible into uh, coverage here. I just, you know, don't like the pressure situation. And pff, Elijah Moore there. Nice scoop up from Caleb Hayes. And 3 nothing in the first quarter. Not the worst thing in the world. But that has to stop right there. And it's looking like the spirits here, barring something crazy and unforeseen, going to uh, probably cap this thing off with some points here. Roquan Smith is my user, and that is, wow, a one-handed grab by George Smith, the subscriber. So Caleb Hayes to George Smith. I mean, he just plucked that thing out of the air with one paw. Look at that. And also, look at that Savannah Spirits uh, end zone. I know you guys like that. I put a lot of time and effort into these teams with the creation of the uniforms and the stadiums and really even just coming up with names. Like, I, it probably took me three weeks just to think of names like, you know, cities and, and what would go well with them. So I hope you guys are enjoying this SFL, this custom league, because I know I sure am. I kind of like DeAndre Hopkins just going up the middle. They're coming out with uh, only one safety, favorable matchup for us, and we're going to give Hopkins a chance. There we go. He broke a tackle. Thank you. Come on. Outrun Jesse Bates. Outrun Jesse Bates. Please 
Tompkins to Hopkins. That is what we needed right there, man. We haven't really seen too much of that. Big, huge chunk. I mean, we've had some deep shots to Hopkins, but they haven't really resulted in touchdowns. That one was, it was a great pass by Drew Thompson. Yes, but that was mainly Hopkins breaking that one tackle. And that is the, uh, you know, the, the offensive mastermind that I am, right? Yeah, I'm so sure. But uh, there was no safety. I mean, there was one safety. He was lined up to the far right side of the field. So I knew as long as, you know, DeAndre Hopkins caught it, he was going to have a chance to make something happen and make something happen. He did. And that uh, gets things a little bit closer now at 10 to 7. All right, guys, let's play some good defense. I'm going to have Roquan Smith just kind of spy the middle of the field. I want an extra guy out there playing some defense. And I mean, if Roquan Smith would actually look at the ball like that is my probably my biggest pet peeve with this Madden cycle, Madden 25. And I'm sure you guys can agree, too. But linebackers and, you know, DBs and stuff like they just don't put their head up and look for the ball. I've, I see it time and time again and thought uh, we were going to have a chance there. But it was a good block picked up by Daniel Banks and a nice pass from Caleb Hayes to George Smith. And uh, on third and inches, I'm half tempted to just guess run up the middle, but I'm not going to. We are going to send some pressure, though. Roquan Smith had a chance at Banks and we are there to get him. And look who it is. Jax Vaden continuing to make plays we'll see if uh, the spirits go for this i really hope they kick the field goal because i don't oh god we're gonna have to defend one more time here fourth and one we're going pressure again press with the blitz that seems like the best thing to do really hope it's a handoff it's not gonna be and oh my God, broken tackle there. You got to be kidding me. It's the tight end, Dallas Bolton. Caleb Hayes now at 118 yards, touchdown. Ballsy, ballsy call. Ballsy, ballsy call. I believe um, Raheem Morris is their coach. I think the Spirits are previously the Atlanta Falcons, if I'm thinking correct. But, you know, we play good defense for three downs. They're close enough to, to risk going for it. And it ends up paying off it's looking like the spirits are gonna put up some points again unless our defense can really make a stand tell you what we're giving uh daniel banks a tough time he hasn't been able to find too many lanes that's gonna make it second and eight from the eight guessing pass shading inside here daniel banks is lined up to caleb hayes's left we'll have aiden leslie kind of play some coverage and it's elijah moore wide open in the middle surprise a freaking prize Savannah Spirits are going to add six more to the score. Um, yeah, that was that was, that was was a bummer, man. We got them finally into a fourth down, and they make a ballsy call. Ends up being a huge, huge gainer. Now they're going to go up 10 on the scoreboard. Look at D-Hop, though. Two targets, two receptions, 95 yards, and a touchdown. So he's having a great day. However, uh, we're going to need some running. We're going to need a running attack. Like, we cannot just be one dimensional and pass it every single time that's not going to work at all let's go ahead and motion over the chief here david najoku and just please set some good blocks for cmc that is all i'm asking for um i mean gain of three is what it is guess it could have been worse all right let's kind of slow things down a little bit here screen pass to christian mccaffrey need some time back here in this pocket we are going to get it and christian i mean wow what <laughs> I don't know what he's doing, but somehow he got a first down. That was like the most glitchy animation I've ever seen. But you know what? When it works out in my favor, damn it, I'll take a glitchy in, a glitchy animation. If it doesn't work out in my favor, then it's garbage. I mean, in fairness, it's, it's kind of garbage anyways. God, I'm so tempted to audible this into another D-hop run, but not gonna. McCaffrey looking for the edge. He's gonna find it slightly and gonna have to settle for a pickup of six. Let's go ahead and motion out Tyler Boyd. I do kind of like how he's curl route might be good for him, but no, we're gonna stick to the run to McCaffrey. Again, looking for some good blocks and nobody blocked Jesse Bates coming down from the second level, which is really just inexcusable. Uh, only gonna pick up two. McCaffrey and Bates kind of doing some jawing. I need like something, probably mesh spot. Like that's what I'm kind of looking for. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and call it. Uh, I don't like to call my own plays typically, but we are going to call it in this situation. A mesh spot does seem like the best thing to do. I am going to have Christian McCaffrey block for me, though, because 
The pressure has been getting to us uh, a lot in this game. Tyler Boyd wasn't really the best pass from Drew Thompson, but a nice adjustment by Boyd. And he is going to be stopped there by Cole Holcomb, but not before we did get the first down. We're in scoring range here, so just got to continue to pick up positive yards. Screen pass. Coach is suggesting it. I love it. I love that idea because, you know, again, scoring, yes, got to do it. But really don't want to leave, you know, too much time here on this clock. McCaffrey caught it kind of at a weird angle. Doing a nice job, Jukin, and Christian has really been more of a threat in the receiving game than the ground game. Drew Thompson is leading us down the field here. I'm going to streak DeAndre Hopkins. There is a safety up there. It is Jesse Bates, too, so probably don't uh, want to be going his way. And, man, if I would have saw David Njoku just a split second sooner, he was wide open. It was a good recovery by Cole Holcomb and he was able to uh, to make the play. I'm going to go TE attack again. Let's see if we can possibly roll out. I don't think that we kind of are. Can we get that to Najoku? Drew Thompson just barely does. It's first and goal. Drew Thompson having a good half, 165 and a touchdown. And really, I mean, I'm in no rush to snap this ball. There's not going to be any clock runoff because there never is. And inside zone probably is the call. Um, if we can cap this thing off, I don't really like this this uh, formation necessarily. If we can cap this thing off here with less than 20 seconds, that would be amazing. McCaffrey going to get in. Perfect. All right. So that was really the perfect outcome. Like that drive was executed beautifully. There was a, a near pick by I think it was Cole Holcomb. Uh, we missed David Njoku, but ultimately we ended up hitting him on another kind of dangerous pass and this should be a 17 14 ball game going into the locker room which i am totally fine with three points that is basically like a zero zero ball game and so far we're playing pretty good on both sides of the ball 17 14 will be your score going into the locker room uh drew thompson's playing good you know really had that fumble not happen we could be up on the scoreboard and, and we really could be up because there was at least there was two chances, at least one for sure, where we definitely could have had an interception. You get a look at some of the games around the league. I have no idea why some of them just have the NFL logo. It is very, very glitchy when you put in your uh, created teams like the halftime show won't even show any stats for at least for me. It just shows Bears versus Bears with no stats. But, uh, you know, at least you get a good look at some of the teams around the league. And if you guys want to know every single team in the league, what their name, what they look like, all that good stuff, there is a video, a first video in this playlist will show you every single squad, and I encourage you to go check it out if you have not. Anybody's ball game, really, but we are going to, I still feel like, need some type of turnover, interception, fumble, sacks in the backfield. There's Banks, who's making men miss, refuses to go down, and actually able to get to the second level. Stopped there by Xavier Woods, but that is not a good start to the second half. Again, I mean, the Spirits are, you know, 4-0 for a reason. So if we lose this game, it's not like it's going to be anything crazy here. Dallas Bolton, the tight end, is going in motion. Screen pass, and it's actually going to be caught there by DeAndre Smith. That was, a, well, it wasn't a screen. It was more like an RPO. But a pickup of eight, and uh, so far, the Spirits are moving relatively easily let's audible into zone here let's guess pass let's shade inside i'm doing all that and it'll probably be a run to banks it is not it's bolton wide open nobody can stop this guy four catches for 62 yards the newly added subscriber doing uh everything he can to continue this nice run here by the savannah spirits and caleb hayes will and his team from the quarterback position it's just so far been pretty tough. Let's have Aiden Leslie play defense, and that time the pass was off the mark. First time we've really seen Caleb Hayes make a mistake like that. Man coverage here. We're going to press up with the boys. Maybe not the best decision. Austin Kringle going to have him drop back in coverage. And come on, I just need a play on defense. It's Bolton again. Tight ends do tend to carve us up and kill us in this series. Bolton showing you exactly why. Spirits are marching down this field pretty easily so we're probably going to need something like that to happen or else you gotta figure they're gonna score and that's good defense there by Amari Taylor having some good plays some bat downs some good defensive plays stuff like that and if we can just hold them to a field goal here in this situation that would be huge 
Uh, Cloud Flats, though, on the outside, not necessarily the biggest fan of that. Let's have Austin Kringle just play some help defense. It's a screen. Can we get to Banks? We can't. Oh, man, do I, oh, I – when the receivers stopped what they were doing and just sat there, I knew it was going to be a screen pass, but just couldn't react in time. Blocking was set up there really, really well. And, I mean, what do you do here on – well, I was going to gonna guess – run up the middle, but you really can't do that when the quarterback's coming out empty. It's going to be a design draw. Caleb Hayes is going to do it himself. Nice drive coming out of the locker room by the Spirits, and they're forcing us to stay on our toes. Got to match their energy. I should have seen a design run coming. Like, who lines up empty backfield from the one-yard line? I mean, you just don't really see that too often. So I should have seen a design run coming. I didn't. And 24-14 is going to be your score. Christian McCaffrey, got to get him going. He should not be averaging 3.5 yards on the ground. I mean, it just shouldn't shouldn't even be a thing. So we are going to start out run play to start this second half here. There's a nice hole there in the middle. Uh, need some blocking to hold. And it's just, I mean, there's literally nowhere to go. Like, I'm searching for blocks. Devondre Sweat going to make this, going to make the stop there. Uh, and I really, in this situation, I need Tyler Boyd to get open on this RPO because I really want to go his way. We are going to go his way. Nice block from DeAndre Hopkins. Boyd making a big, big play there. We really needed that. Oh, my God. And I mean, this arguably four down territory, too. Uh, we're going to try screen pass to McCaffrey. See if he can get some nice blockers there on the outside. He really didn't. Only going to pick up a few. I mean, I hate to say it's four down territory, but like we can't seem to stop the spirits. So if we can't stop the spirits, I mean, do we really want to want to punt the ball back to him? I mean, does it really even even matter if we do? Let's have Tim Patrick go on a drag route here. Looking at Tyler Boyd, maybe DeAndre Hopkins. Let's just go to Patrick. He, we don't really call his name ever. And he needs to just go down because he will get cut if he fumbles the ball. One of these days, we're going to be able to break off a big one with McCaffrey. Will it be here? I mean, not really a big one, but looks better than what a lot of his runs have looked like. So I'll certainly take it. Most importantly, he moves the sticks and able to keep this drive going. So now, you know, we got to match what the Spirits did, man. We cannot come away with three or nothing we need a touchdown here in this situation i don't like any of that we'll just go to najoku i mean that would have been a heck of an effort if he hung on he was stopped there by uh, subscriber jackson prime and pass does fall incomplete second and ten we'll put a hopkins on a curl this worked earlier but really looking for uh my tight ends here and they're not really getting open so i'm just gonna throw it away i mean that's not the desired outcome that I wanted, but I just, I didn't really see anything else happening, you know, so just had to make the smart football play. Maybe it's not always the best football play, but it's the smartest one or a, a smart one. I would say we'll put DeAndre Hopkins on a curl again, and maybe we have uh, Tim Patrick. He is going to be the receiver. So Tim Patrick making plays, man, those might be his first two catches of the season. And they're both for key first downs. Hey, Will the real Christian McCaffrey please stand up? I need you to start doing what Christian McCaffrey does. I mean, that's a good start. Okay. Going to be stopped there by Cole Holcomb, but a gain of eight is more than what we've seen for most of this ball game. So I'm not really uh, upset about that. And that does get us down to the 11-yard line. Um, but, you know, not to beat a dead horse here, but we need touchdowns. And winning instantly was Pat Fryer move. Somehow actually able to hold on to that, getting us down to the four-yard line. McCaffrey inside zone. Does he have it in him? I think he does, and we keep it competitive. Very good job. Christian, I mean, if nothing else, he has two touchdowns in this game, so maybe the yardage isn't really what you'd like to see from CMC. But he is getting the points and fine in the end zone. And again, most importantly, we do keep this thing competitive. Going to have to play some good defense, which has always been a hot topic of discussion on this Terminator squad. But looks like we are primed for another exciting fourth quarter, so don't go anywhere. Excited to see how this one turns out. Terms, what do you got for him here? Can we make some noise? Can we finally get back into the win column? Oh, it's Amari Taylor! That's the interception we were searching for. And there you have it. 
first play of the fourth quarter is a turnover. Subscriber Amari Taylor, thank you so much. That could very well turn the tide of this ball game. Not going to matter, though, if we don't put points on the board, but that was a clutch, clutch play indeed from our subscriber corner. Well, I was trying to call an instant replay to get a little screenshot for a thumbnail, and I called a timeout. Bruh. Don't know. <laughs> don't know why I do the things that I do. Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite us, but uh, right now we have one mission, and that is to find... That's to complete a pass. I don't know what that was from Drew Thompson. That was like a little wounded duck there. We had Romeo Dobbs getting open there for a minute and just didn't end up working. So second and 10, here we are. Screen pass to McCaffrey. That is going to be the move. Hopefully that is the right call. And hopefully we have a little bit of protection back here because uh, this, this is a must score drive here. McCaffrey, I mean, gain of four, I guess guess I'm here for it but third and six now gotta pick this up same play as on first down we're gonna try to probably look for Dobbs underneath and this time I just need Drew Thompson to throw a competent pass oh Dobbs how did he hang on to that that was not even really a good read I threw that into triple coverage but Romeo Dobbs he's been a clutch receiver for us and really uh you guys know how big of a, a Packers fan I am really been clutch in real life too i mean romeo dobbs has been a weapon and i i assume he's going to be a weapon this season too uh we got the ball on the 33 here mccaffrey come on searching for blockers gonna find him for a moment he's at 15 for 55 does have the two scores but you'd like the yardage to be uh just a bit higher fortunately it is not and second and seven just need some kind of like some drags on the field here um probably Looking for a D hop, maybe Boyd, or maybe just McCaffrey, if I'm being honest. Need a McCaffrey to break a tackle. And uh, Spirits player is frozen. Okay. Going TE attack. It worked earlier. We're going to roll out with Thompson. And Thompson just going to do it himself. Look at that. Oh, he might actually go the distance. Drew Thompson. Yes. Wow, not the fastest chap in the world, but like nobody even seemed to react to it. A, any way, by any means necessary, you know, by any means necessary. Once we outran De Devondre Sweat, I was thinking about going out of bounds, but I'm like, there's no spirits here. They literally are ghosts. Thompson going to get it into the end zone himself, and we do take the lead. Oh, man, what a game. We got the lead in the fourth quarter up by four, too. So a field goal would not even really do much for the Spirits. They would need a touchdown. And we'll see how Caleb Hayes does coming off of that interception. Would love to see him throw a second one. Don't think it's going to happen, really. Not holding my breath anyways. But would love to see him throw a second one. But whatever ends up happening, I mean, this has been a good game. I'm happy with it. Win or lose. You know, we're not uh, me. I should say me. I'm not chucking a bunch of interceptions like I was when Bo Nix was under center. Uh, Drew Thompson has played great in this game. He's been clean, mistake free. He has that fumble, I guess, in the first quarter. But I mean, what are you gonna do? Quarterbacks when they that when they get sacked, they fumble the ball, right? But no boneheaded plays by me. And as long as we can hang on here for six and a half minutes, wouldn't that be something to take down the uh, best team in the NFC? rival filled with subscribers like that would just be awesome we'll see what Hayes does here I'm having Kringle kind of spy the field here a bit where is he gonna go he is oh wow nice move there by George Smith ankle breaking move at that and does pick up a first down it's all right no worries let's uh send a little bit of heat here probably would figure it's gonna be maybe Banks in the backfield Hayes is coming out single back nope it will not and oh that's not good George Smith Getting, getting tackled there by Jaden Taylor. But that was a nice play, and Caleb Hayes read the field beautifully on that one. Subscriber, wide receiver George Smith starting to come alive here in the second half. He's made some really good plays. I need uh, man coverage there on the outside with Taylor. Austin Kringle going to spy the field with him. Hayes is going to take off himself, and Kringle there to meet him. That was a key, key tackle because Hayes actually had some daylight and Kringle was able to limit him to just five. All right, spirits are moving here. Alex Singleton going to make him the user and just hopefully maybe try to shoot a gap or something. We're probably not going to be able to. It's a sack. It is a sack from TJ Edwards. 
Would have loved to see a subscriber get the sack back there, but I will take either or. And I mean, what? Okay, he was he was sitting on a guy there. But look, man, this is what I'm saying. This is why this has been a really good game because we're seeing things that we don't often see. Uh, I don't like the fact that I came out in the three four necessarily, but whatever. We got to roll with it now. But we're getting sacks. We're getting interceptions. I mean, that's like, you know, all you can do, all you can do at times. Where's Hayes going to go? Making sure he, oh, come on. He's so open. How does Banks get so open? Oh, I was so worried about uh, all the receivers out there and the DBs were running with them. We completely forgot about the running backs, the running back. And Daniel Banks makes a good play. Now they want me to do all this prevent garbage, which uh, you guys know my thoughts about that. I don't like it. It is what it is. Uh, come on, Jax Vaden. Need you to get in the backfield, brother. You did it earlier. Please. Oh, Roquan Smith. Heads up play there. He got his hands on the ball. Forcing an incomplete pass and a second and ten. I don't know, guys. I don't know. It's sweaty palms time here for sure. Uh, oh, it's Banks. I thought that might be quarterback keeper. Read option. It was not. It was a true give to Banks. Third and four. We've had him in some third downs. Had him in a fourth down, as a matter of fact. And they went for it. Uh, oh, God, dude. I was going to send a safety blitz. That does not seem like the best idea because we need our safeties out there. And uh, let's probably have Austin Kringle play some coverage. It's a screen. Kringle with the key block or the key tackle on Banks. Fourth and one. I'm assuming the Spirits are going to go for it here. I would not. Yeah, they are. Oh, man. Uh, they did this earlier. Yeah, it's empty backfield, too. Oh, God, I don't like this, guys. I don't like this, guys. Come on. Austin Kringle, I'm going to have you play a little bit of coverage out here. Wow, cooked us. Okay. Alrighty then. So, there you have it. Daniel Banks uh, making, a, making his presence felt in the passing game. That must have been like a wheel route or something. And we just not accounting for him. He cooked the linebacker, Jax Vaden. But the stage is set here, guys. We're only going to have to get in field goal range. Want to just put this thing away. Night, night time. But we got two minutes to get down field score. And wouldn't that be something to uh, to do that and to tackle the best team, really, in the NFC? 2.18 to go, guys. This RPO play worked earlier. Uh, not going to really work that time. I need a McCaffrey to break a tackle, I guess. Falling forward, you know, picking up four, not a bad thing. And we're just going to go ahead and let this thing go down to the two-minute warning. Second and six, balls on the 28. Got a long way to go, but let's start off. Screen pass to McCaffrey. We had heavy pressure in there. Look at McCaffrey juking people. Tell you what, man, he has been, like I said earlier, way more of a threat in the passing game today than, uh, than on the ground. But you know what? Doesn't matter. I mean, it is what it is. As long as you're picking up yards, as long as you're making an impact, I guess it you know doesn't really matter. How you do that, and uh, what's going to have McCaffrey block, but no, not going to do that. Let's just go to D-Hop. Oh, I was about to say he had daylight, and that was his first catch, I believe, since the, yeah, his first catch since he had that great one in the first quarter. He had one more after that, but he's over 100 yards now. That is wonderful, and, you know, the doing what we have to do so far right now, and really... With over a minute left of oh, not all three timeouts because I used one like an idiot. Bruh. But an, in no real hurry to get this ball downfield, I would like Hopkins to be a read. Eh, not going to go with it, but we got a wide open Romeo Dobbs with room to roam. We're already in field goal range, man. So this is exactly where we want to be at. Drew Thompson playing great, almost at 300 yards in this game, two touchdowns, and most importantly, no interceptions. I know, I'm calling my own plays again. I don't really care if I'm being perfectly honest. We need a victory, and we need it in a bad way. So I'm going to hope it's Boyd open on the RPO, but not a post. Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll keep it on the ground with Christian. That's fine. Christian searching for some daylight, not going to get it. And we're going to go ahead and call a timeout. DE attack again. I know. I know. I, I'm, I've spammed it a little bit in this game. But, like, when you're one and three, man, look, you got to do what you got to do, dude. And we'll see again if we're able to uh, to roll out. I don't think that we necessarily are. We're going to try Najoku. And, yeah. Okay. Um, don't really want this game to go to overtime, if I'm being 
totally honest. Let's see if we can draw something up here. Uh, we got to make sure we're smart about this, right? Because field goal isn't, even though I don't want it, a field goal is not the worst thing in the world. So above all else, got to make sure we're smart here. You know, over time, if I have to play it, whatever, I'm fine with it. Uh, Romeo Dobbs. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be pass interference. That's going to be pass interference, baby. I already know it. Yes. Who's the culprit? Who's the culprit? Who is the culprit? It is Cole Holcomb. That just set us up beautifully. And they want us to... I don't like this, man. They want us to just run and just kind of like lay down and play for the field goal. And I don't I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that at all. We need to play for the score, right? I don't want this thing to go to overtime, you know, if I can help it. So, Boyd or Najoku probably will see... Uh, Najoku caught it. And we don't have to call a timeout necessarily because there's not going to be any clock runoff, although I do have to hurry up and call this play here. Uh, Got to get this ball off quick, man. This is dicey. This is dicey. I don't know. Oh, why did I do that? I did not mean to do that at all. I pressed, I was spamming X to snap the ball, and I threw it to Najoku. And I guess we're heading to overtime. Didn't really want to do that, but... Oh, they're going to ice me, too. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. They are going to ice me. It's okay. I should be able to still drill this. I mean, that would be something if I didn't. I don't like being in this ice kick situation, though. I mean, what is... I don't know what what this is. Uh, <laughs> yay? Uh, that should be good, right? Dude, what the heck? Oh my god, man. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Oh, dude, the ice kick got me. <laughs> so, uh, uh, what a game. What a game. What a game. What a game. Can't be mad at that but you can, I, I mean, I, I take full ownership for how that last 30 seconds played out and see that timeout, ha not having that timeout did come back to bite us. So like, that's just me selling, man, selling, selling, selling. But look, it was, there's a lot of things to take away from that. And, and here's the thing. I feel like starting next episode, I think we got something going. I think that we're going to make some, some kind of run here. And I don't look, stay with me. This is all I'm going to say. Don't give up on me now, because if you're not here with me when we're one and five, then don't be here with me when we're 12 and five. <laughs> not saying we're going to be 12 and five, but I do think that we're going to go on a tear and a pretty good game here from Drew Thompson, 290, a touchdown, no picks. Caleb Hayes had 256, three touchdowns and a pick as well um and then getting a look at the running game christian mccaffrey two touchdowns yes but just really couldn't get it going too much deontay banks same thing although he was a threat in the past game but seven for 26 3.7 yards yeah uh mccaffrey had 34 let's see george smith five for 69 and a touchdown good game dallas bolton the tight end five for 77 no touchdowns but still a good game daniel banks out of the backfield four for 48 and a score um, also DeAndre Hopkins, good game there. And, uh, DeAndre Smith, two for 21. Getting a look at the defensive side of things here. We'll just kind of, I'm only going to look at the subscribers. Jaden Taylor, four total tackles, a pass deflection. Could have had a pick. So, so close. Trustin Smith from the Spirits had five tackles. And Jackson Prime had three tackles. Also a pass deflection as well. Austin Kringle had four total tackles. Amari Taylor, he had that big interception and also two pass deflections as well. So you love to see that. Aiden Leslie had a tackle. Jax Vaden had three TFLs and, and a sack and a half. That's awesome. Awesome to see. And any more subscribers here? Brandon Moore had a TFL, new subscriber, and also a tackle. And uh, that will, oh, also got to look at the kicking. Sorry, Corey Booter. I butchered your stats here. 0 for 2. That last one, that like the ice kick, it was like sticking straight up. Uh, it was an erect looking kick meter and it just completely threw me off. So, I mean, whatever, but uh, all in all, good game. 
Now let's take a look at the rest of the stats from our subscriber players around the league. Of course, our game, you know how that ended, but uh, Thunderbirds, Toronto Thunderbirds lose to the Providence Red Raiders. And we got quarterback here, Jordan Baker, going up against Josh Allen. So 238, nice yardage, but no touchdowns. And unfortunately did have a pick as the T-Birds suffer. I think they're kind of on a skid like us. And they suffer the L in this one to North Carolina Flyers, also in our division. And they have the brother of our quarterback, Drew Thompson. And that would be Alex Thompson. He had 255, had a touchdown and also two interceptions. Derek Carr for the Motors didn't even really play that good, but he ended up getting the victory. And as far as Alex Thompson's receivers, he was getting Rashad Bateman involved, Mark Andrews involved. Uh, Flyers got some good, some good players here, so... They take the L, and we should be seeing them here pretty soon in the season, I would think. Jersey Shore D's, who we're going to take on in just two weeks. They lose to the Edmonton Coyotes, and Lamar Jackson going up against Deshaun Watson. So we got to take a look at the receiving of the new uh, subscriber tight end here, Jesse Moore. He played good, though. Six receptions for 58 yards. Did have a big touchdown. Malik Neighbors also uh, played pretty good as well. And subscriber Aiden Grau had six tackles, but two TFLs. So even though the D's, and that might be their first loss, honestly, even though they do take the L, at least the two subscribers did perform pretty good in this one. Brand new subscriber on the Akron Summits, and they lose to the St. Louis Sentinels. So Dragon Zetron, and again, I don't know if it's Zetron or Zetron. If I'm saying it wrong, just let me know. But he played okay, 219, two touchdowns and a pick. I mean, he, he outdueled Desmond Ritter by a little bit and as far as who he was getting involved take a look at the summits here he was mainly targeting devonta smith devin duvernay and michael Mayer. so again good ball dispersion but unfortunately summits do lose this one in a close one older rockies crush the saint pete manatees we got two subscribers on the rockies here a quarterback and a wide receiver and that would be lucas thomas who played really well 254 through the air three touchdowns to only one interception he was, uh, see if his subscriber receiver mate, Austin Lucas, he also played good too. So did Christian Kirk, by the way. Wow, what a game. But Austin Lucas, five receptions, 43 yards, and a touchdown. Boulder Rockies looking pretty good this year. How about Silverbacks Nation? They just continue to find ways to win. They beat the Portland Lobsters and subscriber quarterback Kyrie Brooks. Baker Mayfield too, balled out. Not really the best game, 138, but two touchdowns and a pick. And, uh, you know, I guess that was all that mattered. DeAndre Swift was playing really good as far as receivers that Kyrie Brooks got involved. He was looking at Noah Fant, Josh Downs, Puka Nakua, and also uh, DeAndre Swift. So not the prettiest of wins, but a win is a win. And the Topeka Silverbacks continue to pile them up. Portland Destroyers win a tight one against the Las Vegas Jacks. I like the Jacks, too. I considered using them, as a matter of fact, uh, as my main franchise team, but I did not. And we got to get a look at receiver here, Alexander Klebleck. He had two for 12, so not the craziest of games. But as I always say, the best stat in the world is a big W in the win column. San Jose Industrials hand the Roswell Revolution what I believe is their first loss of the season. So Drake May going up against Jordan Love here. And Yeezy Fuentes, after not having a single catch last week, boy, did he come back with a vengeance. Three catches, 90 yards, and a touchdown. Also, Calvin, well, uh, Calvin Ridley's on the revolution, but Zay Flowers played good. And the San Jose Industrials do pick up a much-needed victory. Albany Argonauts do beat the Salem Steelhawks. So we got to check on several players here. Cameron Moore had 232 touchdowns and a pick. Bryce Young was uh, on the other side there. And Bobby Donuts has arrived. 22 attempts, 91 yards, but three touchdowns he is our only superstar subscriber player in the league reason being he is a channel member member he is part of the channel memberships on this channel if you guys would like to join him as well one of the perks is you get superstar or superstar x factor mr bobby donuts here is on the coach role so he does have superstar and wow he completely dominated in this game so nice to see that and we get a look at the uh Defenders here on the Steelhawks. We have several. We have not Oreo. Four tackles. No TFLs. No sacks. Nothing like that. And uh, Daniel THG had two tackles and a pass deflection. So a nice convincing victory from the Albany Argonauts. Last but not least, the Oklahoma City Eels, who we take on next week in our division. 
they played really, really good. If you did not see your subscriber player, remember, bye weeks are a thing. So they could have just been on a bye week this week. I went through all of them, spot checked them, but... We're going to have to see this guy next week, Mason Buchanan, 287 through the air, four touchdowns and no picks. We're trying to get our second win of the season and he's putting up numbers like that. Yeah, that could be tough. And then also Grom Briner, the running back, played really good as well. 15 for 56 and a touchdown. Also, Mason Buchanan, I saw he had a rushing touchdown. I think it said six for 50. So the Eels do down the Montana Mountain Lions. Not happy about how this one ended, but look, subscribers on my team, Huddle up here. Need you to listen to me. What did Aaron Rodgers say uh, in that 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 prolific wild card run to the Super Bowl? Everybody just calm down. One and four, not the worst thing in the world. Even though we lost, we played really good today. And I got a feeling that we are going to start stacking up the wins come next week. But that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.